you ignore it, the thing is gone. You don't have to shout fire, fire, holy ghost. Hey, hey. Somebody called my attention to something, uh, you know, about the some letters that are circulating all over the internet. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know, I just discovered there's some people who nobody knows when they just want to become relevant. They just have to put my name somewhere somehow and just create a, you know, create some kind of stuff to get people to notice them. It's, it's like a situation of notice me by force, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So they say this body, these people that wrote me the letter and they didn't even get the letter to me personally. They're circulating the letter all over the internet, sending it to blogs, sending it to people. You know, these money mongers, these religious zealots, there's nothing they cannot do, you know, to protect their empire, to protect their businesses, to protect their fundraising schemes, because it's all about that. It's the materialistic gospel. It's still part of them. They are the ones that are looking for how to just, you know, malign me, how to dent me, how to, you know, label me heretic and all of that. And this is the same old game they've been playing and playing this old game all over again and all over again. And the only people that will take them serious are people that have not followed my teachings very intelligently and diligently. That's number one. Number two, there are people who don't know anything about the scriptures. Number three, there are people that have been messed up by wrong Bible teaching. Now, I hear that there's a body called, I've never heard of this name before, never in my entire life. And for the record, I was a Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria National Youth President for eight years in Nigeria. Eight years. And I never heard the name of this group before. I never, I'm not even aware of its existence. So, they told me that the name of this group is Nigerian Supreme Council for Ecclesiastical Affairs. Nigerian Supreme Council for Ecclesiastical Affairs. Alright, that's the, that's the name of the group. And they say the Secretary of something is Bishop Professor Fumilayo Davis. All right. And um, they raised issues and they said that me, I'm heretic. Therefore, they have decided <laughs> that I am no more a representative of the body of Christ in Nigeria. What a laugh. What, a, what an effrontery. What audacity. On what basis did they say I am no more a member of the body of, a representative of the body of Christ in Nigeria? They say because number one, this is supposed to be a professor. This is supposed to allegedly to be a professor and for somebody to be a professor it means the person has understood the rules of engagement when issues are dealt with intellectually and theologically the person has understood the rules of engagement and like i've said for the record this body never existed i'm not aware of this body's existence anywhere you know this is the first time i'm hearing such a name i'm aware of pfn i'm aware of 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 Khan, and i'm aware of those bodies that cover the bodies of body of christ but to have an ecclesiastical whatever whatever you know, there's no such thing in Nigeria. And that is why this kind of body has been in existence and somebody is selling soap and they did nothing about it. Somebody stood up in Nigeria and said, God in a bottle. God is in a bottle. They said nothing about it. Somebody in Nigeria said, if you don't pay tight, you will not go to heaven. They said nothing about it. Somebody stood up in Nigeria and came up with Koboko service, came up with all kinds of things. They said nothing about it. It is Abel Damina now that they want to say something about. Well, somebody says they must always start somewhere. So they are starting with Abel Damina. Now, what are the issues that they are raising? That number one, Abel Damina said there is no heaven. That's why I said this alleged professor is not even a serious professor. Because if this professor is a professor, the first thing that entire group should have done is to join my discipleship class and listen to what I'm teaching. Listen to it holistically. Listen to all of my teaching totally. Sit down, listen well. Because you have no right to critique anybody you have not holistically listened to. Listen to his conclusions. Listen to his arguments. Listen to the issues he has raised. Listen to his explanation. When you have listened to all of this painstakingly, you can now begin to talk about criticizing or arriving at a conclusion. But I can tell these people have never listened to any of my teaching complete. Both the professor somebody, uh, Professor Fumilayo, and the entire Nigerian Supreme Council for whatever. That is, if there's such a body existing anywhere. They have never listened to my teaching at all because if they said, I said there is no heaven, it means they have never listened to me. I have never said there is no heaven. I only said the heaven the Bible teaches is not the heaven in the sky. The heaven the Bible teaches is the heaven of the immaterial, the euphoranius. And I did an extensive teaching on heaven, about 40 hours of teaching on heaven and the reality of heaven. I have a book on it. So for this body to say, I said there is no heaven, it means this body, all of them are a bunch of jokers. Maybe they are just politicians who came together wearing the regalia of bishop, wearing the regalia of church, just to have some political relevance. But if these people are theologians, these are very unserious theologians. 
And that's why we have a lot of problem in the body of Christ. Because there are people behind the pulpit who have no right to come, you know, behind the pulpit to speak. How can you quote me? Uh, how can you say what I didn't say? How can you even lie in a document that I said there is no evidence? That's a blatant lie. That's a total lie. Because I never at any time said such a thing. Number two, they said I said that Jesus is not coming back. That's another hogwash. I never said Jesus is not coming back. But I took time to explain the concept of Jesus coming back as an appearance. The Bible says he will appear. They who seek for the Lord, the Lord shall appear. He said, we that are with him shall appear with him in glory. And I took time to explain that word appearance, the appearance of Christ, which is what we call the rapture, or which, which is what we call the second coming of Christ. Then they said, I also said, you don't need God to succeed. Yeah, I said that, but that is the conclusion of my arguments. You cannot edit my arguments and be flaunting my conclusions. So again, I can say that these people are not serious people. They are not even studious people. They are people that are just lazy. They are people that are just looking for how to chase clouds using my name. They are people that are not even grounded. Because if they are grounded, they will have looked for the full teaching on you don't need God to succeed. It was a teaching about 30 hours. And the conclusion of that explanation was that when it comes to material things and material wealth, you really don't, God doesn't get involved in making people succeed. Because once you say it is God that makes people materially rich and others materially poor, then it means God is responsible for class in society. And we never saw such teachings from Jesus. Neither did we see such teachings from the apostles. And we took many hours to do exegesis and explain scriptures within this line. And they never took time to go and look at that. They just concluded something. And I think if you're going to make a strong allegation like, Dr. Damina, we disown you from being a representative of the body of Christ in Nigeria, you should do a studious work. You don't just stand up and just say things like that. Except in a place where people are just jokers. A bunch of lazy jokers who don't have work. So they look for work that nobody gave to them. How can you say, I'm no more a representative of the body of Christ? Some of these people, when I started preaching, I'm not sure they were born again. When I started preaching, I'm not sure they were born again. I'm not even sure they were in, in the kingdom of God. And yet they are saying, I'm no more a representative because I said there is no heaven and I never said such a thing. And you see the kind of jokers we have in, in the, in the so-called so ministry. I mean, look at the jokers there. And then they also said that I said, heaven is calm. I never said that. I have, the videos are out there. I have never said, heaven is calm. I've never said that. And this person is supposed to be allegedly a professor. What a professor. What I said is heaven at last is a scam. I never said heaven is a scam. Again, they are quoting me out of context, number one. Number two, they are saying what I never said. They are lying in public with their two eyes open. And they call themselves Supreme Council for Ecclesiastical Affairs, which even sounds like a copyright. Because the only Supreme Council we know is of the Islamic Affairs. I've never heard of any other Supreme Council. So they went and copycatted the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and added it to their name. Look at a bunch of very unserious people. Very, very unserious people. And anybody who takes them serious must be an unserious person. And like I said, the reason why I'm just saying these things is because people have told me the emails, the letter is all over the place. They have filled the whole place. And this is to help people who don't know what we teach people who may be misled by the information they gave because we care about souls. We care about people. And we don't want people to be misled. Jesus died to save people. We want people to know the truth. We want people to have the truth. And we want people to run with the truth. Then they also said that another problem they have with me is I said God is not responsible. What kind of statement is that? How can I say God is not responsible? Responsible for what? <laughs> Nobody can just start about saying God is not responsible. There must be something God is not responsible for. God is not responsible for class in society. Yes, I said that. But I didn't say God is not responsible. Again, that's another statement made against me as a lie. There's no such video or teaching anywhere. And if they do, I dare this, I dare this Nigerian Supreme, I dare them. From the professor to the smallest member of that whole bunch of jokers, I dare all of you. If there are videos or teachings of mine, bring them out where I said there is no heaven, where I said Jesus is not coming back, where I said heaven is a scam, where I said God is not. If you have such, I dare you today to bring it out. And if you cannot bring it out, then all of you should go and hide in your villages in shame and not even stand on the pulpit again till you attend my discipleship class. I have a discipleship class where I will disciple all of you. Class 101, discipleship. It's online. You don't have to come physically. In fact, I say you won't pay any school fees. It will be free. I will take you through the fundamentals, fundamentals of how to teach the Bible and fundamentals of how to, you know, uh, how to pick a doctrine and correct it. Those are fundamentals. Those are things you need to know if you really want to come out and say things against, you know, uh, 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 somebody who has taken many, many hours painstakingly to teach scripture and explain scripture and explain scripture in the light of Christ. 
Again, somebody said, I mean, this group of people said, another problem they have with me is I say Jesus Christ is not a Christian. Well, Jesus Christ was not a Christian. Christianity didn't start when Jesus was on earth. Again, only a joker, only somebody who, does not, who is not serious, a lazy person that will now think Jesus was a Christian. It means you're not, you're, you're shallow. You're too elementary, you're too shallow to even engage with somebody like me in a debate. In fact, my spiritual children should be able to take care of you, not by way of debate, but by way of discipleship. Because Jesus was not a Christian. Christianity started in Antioch. When Christianity started through the ministry of Paul, Jesus was already gone away from the earth. So how will you call Jesus a Christian? Moreover, I didn't say Jesus is not a Christian. I said God is not a Christian. Okay, and the reason is because Christianity started in Antioch. Before Christianity started in Antioch, what were Christians called? They were called believers in the book of Acts. Again, anybody who doesn't know that does not have any right to stand before the pulpit and teach God's people the word. And then they also said, I said, uh, there is no trinity. I have never said there is no trinity. <laughs> I have always said, trinity is a concept of redemption. Where God the Father is the creator, God the Son is the redeemer, God the Holy Spirit is the regenerator. God the Father created Jesus, you know, died for us and the Holy Spirit indwells us. That's what I teach. Jesus is in the Father, the Father is in Jesus, you know, and you can only know the Father by the revelation of Jesus. You only know Jesus by the revelation of the Father. So for, for them to claim that they are an ecclesiastical supreme council, blah, 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 and they cannot even put their facts together, it shows you a bunch of jokers gathered together and giving themselves a label that they are not qualified to even bear. Then they also said that I said the Bible is not the word of God. I never said the Bible is not the word of God. I never said such a thing. I said the Bible is not the word of God because the word of God is not paper and ink. And I gave John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh. The word of God is a person. His name is Jesus. And they have a problem with that. I mean if you don't know something as basic as that, I don't know why you're calling yourself a bishop in the first place. You don't even deserve that title. Because a bishop must not be a novice. And from all indications, you are a novice. You are even a novice of very simple, fundamental, biblical concepts. You are just a novice. But the Bible says a bishop must not be a novice. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, a bishop must be up to teach. From your conclusions and deductions here, you, you are not fit to even answer the name bishop in any form or in any style. Moreover, remember, Paul told Timothy who was a bishop, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Look how you are shaming yourself in public accusing me of what i did not do casting aspersions on me for what is not true lying on me and calling yourselves ecclesiastical supreme supreme what and calling yourself all kinds of stuff and you are accusing me of things that i've never said and you are taking things you know that i'm putting on my head and writing a lot later that you are circulating all over the world a letter that has no substance a letter that just shows you are jobless you're not serious people finally they said i said uh, uh, no titan of course is their titan are you a levite levites are gone now the Levitical, the, the priesthood has changed. The law has changed. Is that not what the book of Hebrews? Look at, look at it. Go and read it. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11, 12, and 13. There's no more tithe. Tithe is not New Testament. Tithe is not New Testament. What we have in the New Testament is generosity. Christianity is apostolic and historic. What Jesus never did, we are not supposed to do. What the apostles never did, we are not supposed to do. And the church of Jesus is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, which means Christianity is historic and apostolic. None of them pay tithe. None of them receive tithe. We're not supposed to pay tight or receive tight. We don't owe God anything. We only give out of generosity. Somebody say, but it's stewardship. Stewardship in what? Stewardship, the Bible says, is required in stewards that a man be found faithful in the doctrine, in the teaching of God's word. But when it comes to giving, it's generosity. God loves a cheerful giver. If a man giveth according to what he has, it is acceptable. There's nothing like tithing in the New Testament. But if you decide to give 10%, that's your money. Nobody stops you. But it is not it is, does not have any blessing attached. It does not have any curses attached. It doesn't have any of those attached to it. Freely you have received, you freely give. And when people are blessed with the word of God, they have a responsibility to support the word of God so that the word of God can spread. How be it? They determine what they want to give and support the word of God. That I say there's no tithe in the New Testament doesn't mean I'm against giving. God is a giver. I have never preached against giving. I've always encouraged people to give and support the work of God and support the advancement of the kingdom, support the poor, the widows, and the needy. I've never spoken against that. The only thing I'm speaking against is transaction. And that's why some of you preachers are, are angry with me. Because your whole entire life, all you know is transaction. Give, get, buy, sell. Uh, $20, 21 blessings. That's all you know. And that's not the gospel. Again, that's why you need to join my discipleship class. A new class is starting this week. And I'm encouraging all of you, both Bishop Professor Fumilayo and your entire camp of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Ecclesiastical Affairs, all of you, I'm giving you, I'm offering you free scholarship free scholarship. 
join my discipleship class. You don't even have to come in your names. You can come as Nicodemosis. Just send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Asking to be part of discipleship. We will enlist you, train you, teach you quietly. You learn so that you save yourself from further shame and embarrassment in the future. Concluding things that you're not supposed to be concluding. And speaking things you're not supposed to be speaking. All right? And then they said, I said, no holy communion. I said, yes, there's no word as holy communion in the Bible. And I challenge all of you in that Nigerian Supreme Council for Ecclesiastical Affairs. All of you, I challenge all of you. If you can come up with anywhere in the Bible where the Bible talks about holy communion, and then we can have a discourse. Because there's no such place. The only thing that is close to that concept that you guys call holy communion is what we call the Passover. And the Passover was a feast of the Jews. And it was not one. There were seven feasts. So if you are removing Holy Communion or the Passover to celebrate, you can as well celebrate all the seven feasts. Why are you selecting? Celebrate all. And if you're not going to celebrate all, then you celebrate none at all. Some say, but in the New Testament, the, uh, in the book of Acts, the Bible talks about breaking bread. Breaking of bread is not Passover. Passover is not breaking of bread. Did you go to school at all? Passover was a feast of Jews. Breaking of bread was a practice in the New Testament we call love feast, where people bring food and share with one another. Some say, but what about 1 Corinthians 11? 1 Corinthians 11, brother, Paul was talking about the Lord's Supper evening food and he was using a parable of of the passover to communicate working in love that's all i have a book on it about 430 pages where we did exegesis 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 so uh, my advice to this uh, group of, of of people is if you guys don't want to be ashamed you don't want to be embarrassed in the future by giving yourselves a position you don't even own in the body of christ where you're the ones that cut off those that belong and those that don't belong <laughs> and yet you don't even exp you can't understand elementary things like heaven at last is a scam. You don't understand elementary things. Like there is no titan. You don't understand elementary things. Like communion is not even in the Bible. You don't understand elementary things. Like God is not a Christian. You don't understand elementary things. That the Bible is not the word of God. That the word of God is a person. It's not paper and ink. You don't understand elementary things like that. Then I don't know what you're doing. You better get into discipleship class. Let's help you. That's just the beat, beat I have to say on all those letters that people say are circulating all over the place. Everybody, every sound theologian, every sound student of the Bible, and I'm not talking about people that are just way swayed by what my, my, my father in the Lord, what my mama in the Lord said. I'm talking about studious students of God's word. They will tell you that scriptures cannot be simply and, you know, uh, just easily just read like that. There is interpretation. And interpretation of scripture is the crux of Bible teaching. Interpretation of scripture is the crux of theology. Jesus was the first to interpret the scriptures. The Pharisees and the Sadducees had their way of teaching. When Jesus showed up, he differed. He had a didache, a mode of explanation that differed from what was being taught. And that's why the Pharisees and the Sadducees attacked him in his day. They called him, you know, a, a, a man possessed with Beelzebub. They called him all kinds of things. They even must have disassociated him from the body of Christ. Because as far as they are concerned, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were the body of Christ. <laughs> This is interesting, man. But you see, Jesus was not intimidated by all of that. He even looked at some of them and he said to them, you will die in your sins. He said, has any one of you seen the Father? Have you ever seen God before? Have you ever heard his voice? In John chapter 5, verse 37, 38. He says to him, and whom God sends him, you believe not. You search the scriptures. If you search well, in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. Then he said to them, you, can, you will not come to be that you may have life. All right, so... Jesus was the first to interpret in Luke 24, 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself.